So far this season, Ben Simmons has taken the NBA by storm. Sixers fans had to wait a year to watch him play, but nobody cares about that now. Already as a rookie, he is averaging 18 points, 9.8 rebounds, 8.2 assists, and as a legitimate 6 foot 10 point guard with his unreal court vision, his flawless ability to run a fast break, and his incredible power to score basket after basket? Ben Simmons thinks, no, he believes that he has the talent and work ethic to one day become the best basketball player in the world. And yes guys, that's who we're talking about today. We're talking about Ben Simmons because the man deserves it. Now, I know we're only nine games into the season, so maybe you think I'm overreacting here. Maybe you think Ben Simmons is not the future of the NBA. However, let me just say, Ben Simmons is the future of the NBA, and I mean that in two ways. Ways. The first is that the man is obviously ultra talented and is going to do some big things in this league, but we'll get to all of that in a minute. For now, let's talk about the second way I mean that phrase. Because the other reason that Ben Simmons is the future of the NBA is that he's the perfect symbol for where the league is headed. Now, let's quickly take a trip back in time for a second. Let's go back to the 1980s, where Magic Johnson began to change the game of basketball. In case you forgot, God, Magic was a six foot nine point guard who was the key to the multiple championship winning Showtime Lakers. And while winning five rings in LA, Magic was also awarded three MVP trophies. So with all of this tremendous success from a very tall point guard in mind, you might expect that the league would catch on and we would see teams attempting to find the next Magic Johnson over the next 10 or so years. But that's not really how this works. The idea of a tall point guard on multiple teams isn't something that can just happen overnight. No, the league needed to wait for new tall kids who were watching Magic and decided that they didn't want to play center. This new generation of tall kids wanted to control the offense. And so eventually, as time passed, the trend of the point forward emerged. First, we saw guys like Grant Hill and Tracy McGrady, players who played the two or the three but were very capable of bringing the ball up and running the point if need be. And of course, the greatest point forward of this generation is a man we still see dominating the game today. As a young LeBron James grew up watching Magic Johnson, took notes, and ended up becoming our version of a generational talent. He also became something else. The model for future tall point guards to emulate their games after. Because now, we're living in a world where it looks like the tall point guard is here to stay. And these guys are not point forwards. Players who were really wings, but would sometimes act as a point guard. No. Players like Giannis Antetokounmpo and Ben Simmons are the real deal. Six foot 10 or taller giants who are legitimate point guards that the NBA simply has no answer for. Now in previous videos, I've talked about Giannis a lot. In fact, my last video was on Giannis. But the thing is, Giannis was not an all-star until his fourth season when he was 22 years old. Ben on the other hand is just 21 and in his rookie season already, he's shown flashes of true greatness. Headed into this season, Amir Johnson turned heads when he told reporters, I truly believe definitely Ben is going to be the future of this league. Now, this wasn't a shocking prediction to make because Ben was a former number one pick, but there were still plenty of questions about his game. Was he fully recovered after missing a year with injury? Could he be effective in this modern NBA with a bad jump shot? Well, those questions were quickly answered in Ben's first nine games as a pro. Right away, it's clear that not only can Ben be effective, he can be dominant. Already at just 21 years old, Simmons has put together a combination of size, skill, and athleticism that has made the 76ers a must-watch team whenever he's on the court. Sure, the concerns about his shooting turned out to be very real, as so far Ben has taken only 7 of the 123 shots he's taken this season from 15 feet or further if you take half-court shots out of the equation. So yeah, it's pretty obvious that at this point, Ben Simmons Simmons cannot effectively shoot a basketball, but the crazy thing is, that hasn't mattered at 
all. Just watching tape of his games, you can see that opponents know to play way off of Ben, daring him to shoot. However, unlike some players, cough Josh Smith, cough. When Ben is given this open space, he doesn't settle for low percentage jump shots. Instead, he uses the court vision this space gives him to find his teammates for easy baskets and to gain a clear advantage when he drives to the basket himself. As you can see, when Ben drives, he's able to gain an incredible amount of momentum in a very short amount of time. That's because the man who's guarding him is often standing flat-footed at least five feet away from him, which has allowed Ben to use his momentum to blow right by the defense and finish around the basket. With this, Ben has been able to put up big numbers in the half court, but that's not where his game really shines, because it's in transition, on the fast break where he simply cannot be stopped. When the ball is in his hands on the break, Ben is shooting a remarkable 73.7% from the field. That's second to only LeBron James among players who take at least two shots a game on the fast break. And because he's so unselfish, Ben is also able to rack up several easy assists a night by finding teammates for open looks, which is impressive. But what's even more impressive is what happens when you look at Simmons' production as a whole. Because when he recorded his second triple-double of the season against the Pacers, Ben became just the second rookie in NBA history to put up two triple-doubles in his first nine games. The only other player to ever do that was Oscar Robertson, which is fitting because if Ben were to put up his current stats, at least 18 points, nine rebounds, and eight assists a game for the season, he would become just the fifth player to ever record those numbers for a full year. The other four are Russell Westbrook, Oscar Robertson, Magic Johnson, and Wilt Chamberlain. Some elite company to say the least. Of course though, we are getting ahead of ourselves a little here. We are only nine games into this season, and sure, Ben might not maintain those averages for a full year. But even if he doesn't, those first nine games have already been historic. Because according to basketballreference.com, since 1984, the first year the site began keeping track of these stats, Ben became just the second player to ever average over 18 points, nine rebounds, and eight assists a game in the first nine games of a season. The only other player to do that was Russell Westbrook. So again, yeah, it's early, but we have to remember that Ben's production really shouldn't be a surprise. Before Ben had ever stepped foot on an NBA basketball court, there were already several legends that believed he could do this. When watching Ben at LSU, Magic Johnson was quoted as saying, Ben Simmons is the best all-around player I've seen since LeBron James. And LeBron himself has said, I think he's a great young talent. And that he has all the tools so he can be as good as he wants to be. That is heavy praise, but perhaps the most important quote we've heard about Ben Simmons is from Ben Simmons himself. After the first seven games of his career, where he was exceeding expectations, Ben said, I thought I'd be playing better, honestly. I need to pick it up. That's the type of confidence you want from a young star. That's the type of player you project to develop into one of the league's best players in the future. Because even though he's had a historic start to his career, Ben Simmons is still not satisfied and he won't be until he's the best basketball player in the world. Now again, we're just nine games into Ben Simmons' career, but again, I just think the talent is obviously there. This isn't a fluke. This was a player who was the consensus number one pick. A guy who was hyped up by Magic Johnson and LeBron James, living up to that hype. So the only question now is, can the Sixers build a good enough core around Ben to win a championship? Well, the short answer to that question is that it already looks like the Sixers have a good core in place to eventually become one of the NBA's best teams. They understand that they need to surround Ben with shooting because when Ben has shooters like JJ Redick, TJ McConnell, Robert Covington, and Dario Saric on the court, the floor opens opens up for him and he's able to use his talents to the best of his ability. And right now it looks like everyone I just named other than maybe JJ will be with Ben for the foreseeable future, which is definitely a good thing. But in order for the Sixers to really grow into an elite team, in order for them to become a potential NBA dynasty, Ben is going to need other star players around him. And of course, there are already two players on the Sixers current roster that could be those stars. This season so far, Joel Embiid has looked just as dominant as he was last season. The only thing stopping Joel from becoming a future Hall of Fame big man is, of course, his injury concerns. 
Sure, Joel has played in eight out of the nine games this season, which is a promising sign, but we still have to wait and see if he can survive the wear and tear of a full season. If he can defy the odds that guys like Greg Oden and Andrew Bynum have set for him and play at least a consistent 60 games a season for the next 10 or so years, then yeah, the Sixers will already have a superstar duo in place to compete for the championship for the next decade. If Embiid doesn't stay healthy though, that's going to be a problem, but at least Philadelphia will have a chance with their third potential all-star. Now, it's really impossible to say what's going to happen with Markel Fultz. The problems with his right shoulder are definitely troubling, and some have even gone so far as to say that the injury is in Markel's head. To everyone who is doubting Markel though, I'd just like to remind them that this is a guy who's played in big games with big crowds before, and that he was the consensus number one pick all of last year for a reason. I don't think the problem is mental, and I hope that once Markel has a chance to heal, he'll come back and be the prospect that everyone projected him to be last year. Because last season at Washington, Markel looked like the perfect two guard to pair with Ben. Fultz showed he was able to play off the ball, to shoot at a high percentage from deep, and he was able to run the offense when his team needed him to. Which means, to sum this all up, if Joel and Markel are both able to take the court with Ben and stay healthy, then I have to say, the Philadelphia 76ers are going to be a very scary team for a long, long time. And there you have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for new videos coming soon. On this channel, I look at NBA history, I look at NBA conspiracies, and I have a what if coming soon. So if you love basketball, make sure to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, thank you guys so much for supporting it. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music.